to Alice and Kian, um, who are going to talk about making it real. The family carer's perspective is quite foggy at this point. Okay, are you okay to? Yes, yes. <coughs> you just wipe the fumes. The fumes, <laughs> yes. Okay, so Kian, would you like to do the introduction? I would, yeah. Hi, hi everyone. My name is Kian. Um, I am a sibling of a uh, service user that goes um, to that, um, that goes to um, Hay Mills, um, a um, a respite centre in the London Borough of Ealing. There he is, there in the middle. Uh, my brother and I both have autism, but. It's a bit more complicated than that. Autism is a what, as you may know, autism is a is a wide range range spectrum condition, and there are different degrees of it. And um, he's at the I'm at the very able end of autism, which is Asperger's syndrome. My brother, on the other hand, he is on the very profound end of the spectrum, um, and he can't talk and he finds life very difficult um, because of that. We um, have to use, um, we have to show him pictures. Um, we have to, he, he, has, he has pecs to help him um, communicate. Does everyone know what they are? Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. Um, the, his former Westbite Centre, Hella House, was good in some ways, but not so good in in other ways, that was they, services. Just that was when he was in when he was in trial services. This was when he was under eighteen. He's, um, he's eighteen now. He's going up to nineteen. Yeah, he's almost nineteen. Yeah, um, they used to put him to bed ridiculously early at nine o'clock, and that's that's far too early, you know. And he would be really, really, and he used to not sleep, and he would make loads of mess, and by mess. Now, I'm not going to spell it out because it wouldn't be fair on it, but I think you all can guess what I might mean by mess. It's not nice at all. Um, and, um, but, um, It was quite big and noisy, wasn't it? It was quite big and noisy. And um, he often would, um, would he, he often would have get into a late routine because of it, because he wouldn't be used to getting to bed early. So he would just be up and awake and um, keeping everyone awake then and also now this really upsets us deeply but one time he attacked a member of staff at Hella House and they didn't tell us which was really really bad of them and um, but me my mum and I were out shopping and he attacked us both and he really, and he almost very, very seriously injured my mum and pushed her to the ground. And it was very horrible. And you know, we would have been a lot more, we would have been, we would have been a lot more wary if, 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 uh, if we had, and careful if we had known that he had attacked a member of staff the other day. And it was really, really bad of them not to tell us. Um, he actually hadn't slept very well the night before, and uh, he. he also lashed out and none of this was communicated to us so um, I actually said to Kim could you go and get a pint of milk from the shop and he said oh no let's go in the car so we went to the car as though way I would have taken Connor around shopping if I'd known he was really yeah. tired he hadn't slept yeah. and especially after there'd been an incident so it's unfortunately there was very bad communication at that time um, yeah with uh, the staff and the uh, yeah. So and the parents, which is very bad. Um, it was a bit unfortunate that when we were in Tesco's, we walked right past the cake store to the milk, and I think that's what upset Colin because we obviously weren't stopping to get jam tarts or whatever. Uh, uh, so he pushed me to the milk. Uh, you know, the metal things that they have crates that put the milk in, and I fell to the ground. That was, that was a real, real, real low point. Yeah, it was. Um, he pushed me too, but I didn't fall through the ground, luckily enough. You were a bit too big. A bit too big. But it was still scary, you know. Um, also, um, 
so um, he is now uh, nearly 19 and he's, a, and he's a, an adult service West Point Centre. Now, it's only really luck that he's there because we didn't find out through trial services at all. We just happened to find out from another parent. So if it wasn't for that, we could easily be basically left with, well, actually literally, what was then basically, literally <laughs> left with nothing. And you know, so it just goes to show that there needs to be a lot more, there needs to be a bigger connection with the child services and the adult services. It should be once he's finished being a child and that's it, you know, the child services are no longer helping, like right, we've done our bit. They should, they should support parents to help, um, to help their, their, their child and move on to adult services because um, it's not easy, you know, it was only luck that we found it out for a parent. It could have very easily not have happened. Um, and I would like to say that he's doing very well at this new place. Um, it's a lot quieter than the trial service West Flight Centre. It's, um, that he, there's one particular member of staff that he gets on very well with. And um, also, I think they were, they're quite a bit more organised, would you agree, I think? Yes. A little, in yeah. many ways, yeah. It's had like a good transition to, to adult services. Yeah, and, I, and um, from what I know, they don't seem to put him to bed early like they did before, because I've noticed that he hasn't been feeling so... The, the really good thing about that is that they take him for a walk every evening to help him wind down. Which is just what he needs. Yeah. And that wasn't happening in children's services because I think one time they took him out for a walk and uh, he hit one of the carers and, and so they stopped taking him for walks. And that's really, really bad because, you know, we, he sometimes hits me and mum, but we don't just say, oh, we're not going to, we're just going to leave Connor. We can, I mean, as much as sometimes we quite like to, we can't. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. so a bit... Yeah. I'm glad you could see the uh, light of, the, of, of our darkness, thank you. Yeah. But um, basically, you know, that is, you know, if, if one person can't mind Connor, they should find somebody else to do it, you know. If he's hit one member of staff, they should get another member of staff, you know. That really is pretty poor and unprofessional. They go, we hit somebody, we're not going to do it anymore. They've got to help us, you know. That is really, they've got to, oh, they've got to, really think about why they're doing their job, you know, to help parents all these West Point centres. And, and maybe what the hitting was about, because it was obviously some kind of communication, maybe he didn't like where he was going. Yeah. Problem is he can't say, and if he doesn't understand it, you know, he don't hit people in life, so that's his, that's his way of dealing with things, sadly. Uh, what did I want to say? He had a really good transition to Haymills and uh, I found that the staff really listened to me and valued what I had to say as uh, the expert on my own child. So that was good. Uh, we soon built up good relationships with staff. And um, what do you think Colin likes about Haymills? Can you... I think he um, likes. Um... I think uh, they take him out on trips quite a lot, so he's often, you know, quite tired, you know, it's <laughs> and relaxed. Um, also, um, the, um, it's a smaller place, which I think helps. Um, it's quite homely, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very relaxing, and um, I also think... Um, Another thing that's helped really well with the transition has been the network meetings that we have uh, every month, which get everybody together. Uh, we've got a fantastic case coordinator, uh, Sarah Lehram, who's absolutely brilliant. And we've got the people from the Certitude and somebody from school. Connor's going to be leaving school in, in, Jan in July, so uh, he's going on to a college, a special needs college, in, uh, in September. Uh, so. We've had people from the college coming as well. Uh, and those meetings really help to uh, iron out any problems before they really take over. Yeah. 
And that's really it, I think, apart from to say that uh, sometime in the future, I won't be able to have Colin at home all yeah. the time because I'll be too old and infirm myself. And it's, yeah. it's very stressful having uh, a young person with very complex needs. Oh, sorry to yeah. put it, but us having to um, look after my brother really does affect the whole entire family, really. You know, me, my mum, my brother himself, of course, and also dad, because, and also uh, me and Connor's dad, because of, uh, basically affects mum, because she needs to look after Connor, because, you know, Connor's very hard work. It affects me, because I also have to help my mum and look after Connor, and also, all, I have some issues myself that need solving, but um, they can't be helped when we've got to look after Connor and there isn't really much time to sort out my issues. Also, it affects Dad because he has to go back up for because he lives in Ireland and he has to go back up forth to Ireland and back to, uh, to to help us look after Connor sometimes. So it affects the whole family and it makes life very stressful for everyone really. So that's why these West Point centres are very vital and important and essential. And people really do need to realise that, you know, one day my mum will be too old to look after Connor. And, um, and then we'll want something a bit more permanent. We'll want something him. a bit more permanent. Hopefully, certitude can help us with that too. Yeah, we do hope so. And we're, we're camping on them too. Yeah. We are. I don't, know if we should have, I don't know if I should have said that, but now, oh well, what the hell. <laughs> I'm sure they can, I have faith in them. I just wanted to draw your attention to the pictures because uh, Connor is 18 years old, nearly 19, he's six foot tall, but he is my baby. Um, as are all these young people or, or older people that, that, that we're talking about, they're, they're all someone's baby. And he was so cute. <laughs> I think we're done. Yeah, we are. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you.